Are you working on your author career, but struggling to get that first book published? Does the goal of being an author seem too lofty? Or thoughts of having multiple books and making a full-time living are as fantastical as living in Cinderella's castle? Welcome to Discovered Wordsmiths, a podcast where aspiring authors can be heard. Join Steven Schneider as he finds and talks to authors you may not know, but authors that have gotten their foot on the author career path. Hear what they've done to get there and where they want to go now. Settle back. It's time for a bit of inspiration and advice. Come listen to today's Discovered Wordsmith. Well, Shay, uh, thank you for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it. Um, to get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself outside of writing life? Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I am from the east end of Long Island, New York. Uh, for the past couple of years, I've lived in South Carolina, um, first in Columbia, and now I recently moved to Charleston. But I kind of split my time between South Carolina and New York at the moment. Um, all my family is still in New York. I went to college at Tulane University in New Orleans, where I got my BA in English. And um, I was also a member of the women's tennis team. And after that, I went on to grad school for my MFA in writing at Sarah Lawrence College in Bronxville, New York. Well, wow, so you've been all over. Um, I, I love uh, being in New Orleans. Actually, I was supposed to be at a writer's conference on Halloween in New Orleans, and it got canceled because of all the COVID stuff, which was very sad. Oh, yeah, that's too bad. It's such a fun city. <laughs> so uh, real quick, the the tennis team, were you actually on a scholarship or did you just join the team? Um, well, I wasn't on a scholarship, but I was recruited to be on the team um, at Tulane. I played competitive tennis all throughout my childhood and then through college, I actually lived at Everett Tennis Academy in my senior year of high school in Florida. Wow. So you've really been all over the country to various schools and cities. Yeah, in the, the East area, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this side. Uh, well, uh, New Orleans. Um, okay. So with all of that background and everything you've done, why did you decide to start writing? Um, so interestingly, I actually grew up selective mute. A lot of people, um, are unfamiliar with what that is or haven't even heard of it. And, um, it's basically an anxiety disorder surrounding speaking. Um, so I've always been very shy, but when I was younger, there were certain situations where I couldn't speak at all, um, specifically with people I didn't know well or wasn't comfortable with. And especially in school settings. So when I couldn't speak, I would write. Um, writing was my voice in many ways and pretty much the only way I felt comfortable expressing myself. Um, so I didn't give much thought to writing when I was younger because I was so focused on tennis. But when I look back on it, I was always writing poems or short stories and then I um, in college, when I had to declare a major and think about what I would start doing after college, um, I started realizing that other than tennis, writing was really the one thing I really enjoyed. So I decided to enter the MFA program and pretty much been writing ever since. I, I find that fascinating because I've heard from so many uh, writers, authors that got into writing because they had something they were trying to overcome uh and with you uh, what was it called i'm sorry selective mute yes uh that that that's an interesting <laughs> because uh, you know that that could be so negative do you, do you find that when you were younger maybe i'm guessing that the tennis helped you get out of that or how did you deal with that when you were younger um yeah i guess I tried all sorts of things when I was younger. It was just very painful being uh, that shy and having that much difficulty speaking. And I eventually started to overcome it. I mean, I've still always had a lot of anxiety about speaking, social anxiety. But um, yeah, the 
the forms of expression certainly help with it. Well, I, and I think that's great that you're even talking on the podcast today. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, um, <a> little anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think, uh, you know, sometimes the anonymous thing on the internet helps a little bit, you know, uh, we're not actually looking at each other right now. Uh, so I think that, you know, may help a little bit. I've got, uh, a, one of my kids, uh, has high anxiety and has to take medicine for it. Uh, so things like, you know, getting out, even at the grocery store, putting things back on a shelf can cause anxiety and, you know, they freeze up, but getting online with a microphone and headphones, they have no problem then talking to people. Uh, so, you know, in, we have all have problems with trolls online, but, uh, in some ways there's a benefit to certain people that too. So it sounds like to me, like your writing has helped you come out of that and and then you know being able to be on this podcast maybe is hopefully the next little step i i'm i'm bragging i guess hoping <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it certainly is it's it's always great to take steps um okay so you decide to get into some writing um i i t- do you still play tennis um not really. I got pretty burnt out after college, actually, spending my whole life focused on it. Um, so I haven't played too much in like the last seven years or so. I play a little bit here and there for fun. Um, but yeah, I've kind of taken to other forms of exercise now. Great. Well, yeah, we all kind of get past that, I guess, uh, things we did when we were younger sometimes. Uh, I, I wish I still played as much, much music as I used to. Um, so you've written your first book, uh, and I found it on Reezy Discovery. Uh, tell us about that. What's it called? What's it about? Um, yes. Yeah, so my debut young adult novel was published just last week. It's called Fractured. Um, it's a contemporary coming of age story that confronts a lot of societal issues that teens face today. Um, The book is about Mason Vance. He's a teenage football star and he breaks his wrist in the first chapter. And when he goes to the doctor's office, he meets a girl, Lace, who's there seeing a therapist in the same building. And Mason is intrigued by her and starts to develop feelings for her. And he begins to learn more about her emotional struggles and that she deals with mental illness and The story kind of takes the course of his literal physical fracture meeting her more metaphorical inner fractures. And he learns a lot about mental health, which he never gave any thought to before and begins to question a lot of his past behavior, um, especially because he's a very toxic male character in the beginning of the story. Um, So without giving too much away, his and Lace's relationship comes to a sort of breaking point one night when Mason's forced to realize he couldn't leave behind who he'd always been as easily as he thought. And he's set on a path to healing both physically and emotionally. Wow. Uh, So you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'm sure you struggled growing up and it sounds like you're using that to fuel the book and help others out there that may be struggling with those same problems or very similar, you know, being able to relate to. Yes, definitely. Um, I actually had the idea for the book when I broke my own wrist (laughs) on my 25th birthday. And uh, I started thinking a lot after that about how differently um, society sees like conditions that can be seen as opposed to ones that can't be seen like depression and anxiety. And I, I think that's great. Uh, my daughter has struggled with depression and I know we tried uh, various many things to get her to partly realize, you know, you're not the only one going through this, you know, don't feel alone. So I think that's important. I, I applaud that. I think, Uh, hearing from people who have also struggled, you know, it's one thing if, you know, uh, uh, JK Rowling wrote a book like yours. Yeah. Yeah. Great. (laughs) You know, how can you relate to that exactly? So I think it's important for people to understand uh, that when they're, you know, going through this, not everybody, or there, there are more people out there. Not everybody understands that. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so did you think of uh, making him the tennis star instead of the football star? <laughs> um, for some reason, he just was a football player in my head when I imagined him. I mean, it's like, it's a very macho sport and he's a <laughs> macho guy. And I actually, I don't even really know all that much about football. So I had to learn a lot while I was playing. <laughs> I, I love that because that seems to happen to me too. It's, it's, I always tell people it's like, there's another world and I kind of pull open a veil and peek through to see what's happening. I don't think it up. It's just me reporting what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever uh, see the show Friday Night Lights? Uh, yes, I love that okay. show. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, when you said that about the football star getting hurt made me think of that because that was a great show. Yeah. So writing this, your first book, what did you learn and what would you do different? Um, I guess I learned how much decision making and how many steps are involved specifically in self-publishing, even after you've fully finished writing the novel um, and how having all the power can be both a blessing and a curse. Um, it was an overwhelming process to self-publish. And I often found myself wishing I had more support or help, especially because I'm pretty indecisive. Um, I don't, necessarily think I'd do anything differently other than maybe publishing sooner than I did. Um, I kind of tinkered with my book a lot for the last couple years um, just because it wasn't published yet and I had no plans to publish. Um, but I had essentially been finished with it for like two years before I finally decided to leap in and self-publish. Okay. So these things you've learned, are you thinking about a second book and going to apply some of this to your next book? Do you have more confidence to get another one out? Uh, how's that feeling? Um, yes, I definitely have plans for a next book. Um, I recently started writing a new young adult book. It's partially inspired by true events. Um, it's another contemporary coming of age story, but very different storyline than Fractured. Um, I haven't written much of it yet, but I would still like to explore the possibility of traditional publishing and an agent, um, if not just to get a different experience and learn more about the publishing industry as a whole. I think that's great. Actually, traditional publishing has kind of scared me. I don't know if I could take hearing from so many people to say no uh, <laughs> back. So um, have you had people read it and gotten feedback from some people? What have they been saying? Um, yeah, I've had a lot of really positive feedback from readers, um, some reviews on Goodreads and Amazon. Um, I actually worked with a publicist and they put it up on NetGalley for a few months. Um, so it's really nice when you see readers who have read it and, just to feel like they totally got it, like what you were trying to say and that message you wanted to get across. So it's just really, really great when you see readers connecting in that way with your work. Um, there's been a few discouraging reviews. Um, I think it's just mainly because my book is a little bit controversial in terms of content and the uncomfortable issues it addresses. And my narrator is very unlikable. So I think some readers just don't really like that. <laughs> and I have to remind myself that that's okay. Um, it's not for everyone and no author can create something that everybody just completely loves. It's impossible. So, um, Right. Even J.K. Rowling has negative reviews. <laughs> exactly. So those who connect with it and love it, those are the core group of readers and just try to remind myself of that. And it's overall been very encouraging and positive. Was uh, getting the negative reviews and dealing with that, was that something that held you back from wanting to publish? Um, at times it just, it's hard when you have so many people saying so many different things and you're letting them all influence your thoughts. Um, so 
being level-headed about it is really important and knowing what you can use to better your writing and what you just really need to ignore. I think that's great because I, I hear so many authors say that they, they've got something written or they've got ideas, but they're afraid of the negative reviews. They don't want to hear the negative reviews or uh, they, they do read them and then they just freeze up and stop. So I, I think uh, having to deal with that is something a lot of authors struggle with. Yeah, definitely. It can definitely be discouraging, but just have to push through it and put it aside. <laughs> right. It sounds like you've had a couple, but you've had way more good feedback. And then uh, has that helped push you to get the second one done a little faster maybe than the first? Um, not necessarily. I'm a pretty slow okay. writer. <laughs> um I, yeah, I mean, I've, I've gone in phases of just feeling a little bit too discouraged to write or just having resistance to writing, I guess. But um, I definitely do really want to get this book out there, this next one, but I do write pretty slow and I revise a lot. Like I pretty much from my first draft to the finished product, there's basically nothing from the first draft that's in it by the end. So it's a long revision process for me. So when you get discouraged or don't feel like writing, what do you do to get back into it, to get yourself in the right mindset to do it again? Um, sometimes I just force myself. I just open up my computer and just say, I'm just going to write for like, a page. And if I want to stop after that, fine, but I'll probably more often than not, probably 19 times out of 20, I will end up writing full chapters. And it's mainly just the will to sit down and do it. That's the most important, I think. And I I think you just nailed it right there. The difference between a professional author and a hobbyist, uh, whether you want to or not, sometimes you just got to sit down and do it. And I'm like you, there are times, days, I'm I'm just not in the mood. I don't feel like it. But then I start, you know, writing and creating. And next thing I know, you know, pages are done and hundreds of words are flowing out and I don't want to stop. <laughs> so I agree. It, sometimes you just have to make yourself do it. Yeah, absolutely. You can't wait for inspiration to strike. You'll be waiting forever. Right, right. Um, so what are you doing to market your book? I heard you say you ha- you were on NetGalley for a while and I know you're on Readsy Discovery. Are you doing anything else? Um, well, I hired a publicist um, about four months before the release. So I've been working with Smith Publicity. Um, and yeah, they put it up on NetGalley and they have been monitoring all the reviews and requests through there. And they've reached out to um, several book bloggers and bookstagrammers and media outlets, um, just anything to create any sort of buzz around the release date. Um, I've now been writing a couple articles and listicles for media outlets that have to do with some of the themes in my book. Um, So basically just trying to get my name out there at the moment, but I'm not actually doing any marketing right now. I definitely plan to learn more about Amazon ads once my publicity campaign is up with them. Okay, great. And uh, when you are writing, what uh, software and services do you use? Um, I use Word for all of my writing. I've always used Word since before high school even. I I just feel very comfortable with it. It does the job for me. Um, I haven't formatted my own book, so I don't have any software for formatting. I um, hired a professional to do the interior formatting and I can definitely see why it would be valuable to learn to do my own formatting since you can't make any further changes uh, without that software and you have to go through somebody else with any little change you want to make. Um, But I just didn't really want the stress of learning something new. I wanted it done like fully correctly and professionally. And there's definitely 
uh, something to be said about that. Uh, if you're a writer, you, you don't necessarily change your tires and you don't fill up the oil, you know, exactly. we hire people to do that. So formatting, even advertising, putting online, I think that's coming around more and more that there are some services out there. The, the problem is the slight margin and being able to make a profit, even with hiring somebody to do some of those. Yeah. Okay. So a uh, slight change uh, uh, when you were growing up or even now, uh, what are some of your favorite books and authors? Um, I really love young adult contemporary and coming of age. That's basically all I read right now. Um, so my favorite authors in that genre are definitely John Green and Jay Asher. Um, they were huge inspirations to me when I first started taking writing more seriously about 10 years ago now. Um, so yeah, I've read all of their books and I just love the powerful messages and issues they confront. And I really love John Green's memorable characters. And, uh, where you live and you may not have been there in a while, but do you have any favorite bookstores around you? Um, yeah, I love Sag Harbor and Southampton books on Long Island. They're two different bookstores with the same owner. Um, there's not really a ton of local bookstores in the area I grew up, but those ones are definitely special and have a really great atmosphere. Um, I haven't, I haven't been to New York in a couple months, but I'm definitely looking forward to going back and visiting those bookstores, especially around the holidays. Right. Yeah, I agree. We, I've been trying to get to a couple bookstores. It's some of them are open, some are closing and it's not a, a it's not happy for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shay, um, do you have any advice for new authors that maybe struggling to get a book out or even maybe some teens that are having problems, feel like they're alone in the world uh, about, you know, using writing to help uh, uh, get through life sometimes. Uh, any advice for any of them? Yeah, I would honestly say to just keep writing. I feel like that's the most valuable advice any of us can get. It feels simple, but it's easy to lose sight of why you started and allow some of the joy of writing to be sucked out due to the outside circumstances and rejection and difficulty of publishing and just things going on in our lives. Um, but I started writing because I love it and it's my voice. So I don't need to take my own voice away when there's enough obstacles that come along with being a writer. So I'd say, remember why you started and, don't lose sight of that no matter what happens with publishing and marketing and so on. It's really about the writing first and that important form of expression. Great. Thanks. Tell us one more time before we go, what's the name of your book and where all can we find it? It's called Fractured. Um, it's available on Amazon. It's also enrolled in the Kindle Unlimited program on Amazon. So if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription, you can read it for free. And um, all information about my book, um, my social media can be found on my website, which is shaysiegel.com. It's S-H-A-Y-S-I-E-G-E-L.com. Wonderful. Thank you, Shay. I appreciate you taking some time talking to me today and telling everybody about your book. I wish you luck in that. And I hope uh, maybe we touch base again sometime when your second book comes out. Oh, great. That would be great. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to Discovered Wordsmiths. Come back next week and listen to another author discuss the road they've traveled and maybe sometime in the near future, it might be you.